So, I know what you guys are thinking, but Matt, if you go carless, think about, think about all the babes that are no longer going to be fawning over you because of your sick whip. Right, I don't, I don't have a sick whip, and I never have had a, a, a nice lady fawn over me because of it. Well, at least I don't gotta worry about that then. What is up you guys, Matt McKeever here, and so today I figured, let's get a little weird. Let's talk about the idea of going carless. And so if you're familiar with me, if you're familiar with my channel whatsoever, you're probably aware of the idea that I view a car really as just an A to B transportation tool. It's not a reflection of my ego, it's not a reflection of my value as a human being or the value I provide to society. It literally is just a way to solve the problem of I'm here and I want to be here, how do I get there? That's, that's literally all a car is to me. So please understand that's the lens we're going to be viewing today's video through. But I figured what better time to talk to you guys about the idea of going carless as spring approaches here in Canada. Uh, we get a lot more energy, a lot more pep in our step, and I know that this is a little weird, so just be prepared. We're taking the weirdness knob, we're going to turn it up a few notches, and we're going into the crazy, the idea of going carless in a North American society. And so the whole purpose of today's video is to walk you guys through kind of my thought process when I started examining, do I really need a car? And so a little bit of background on myself, I've owned a car ever since I was 16 or 17. And going through that kind of back history, the reason I got a car at such a young age was I grew up on a farm. And so in order to get like an after school job or a nights and weekend job, there was literally nothing within walking or biking distance where I could really get that sort of job. So I got a job in a nearby town called Gren Bend, Gren Bend, Ontario, if you guys have ever been there awesome and so I actually worked at a restaurant there washing dishes and so in order to get to that job it was about 10-15 minute car drive I bought my parents old car I probably got a little bit of a sweetheart deal but I still I paid close to fair market value for it and I used that vehicle to get from A to B mainly from my parents house to my job and that pretty much was the beginning of my driving career ever since then I've owned a car in one capacity or another and as an auditor working for a public accounting firm it was often very useful because I'd be sent out to clients job sites or clients offices and I'd have to go there and I need to get from A to B and so it was just a really easy convenient way for me to get places however my lifestyle has changed significantly since those days I no longer have a job I no longer have a workplace and so that's drastically reduced the areas and the places that I need to go visit on a day-to-day -day basis. So speaking of that idea, where do I actually drive the most often? Uh, so common uses for myself as well as other people are work or meetings, groceries, and food or entertainment. So again, let's just break down for those of you that maybe aren't familiar. I'm living in downtown London, Ontario in what's called the Woodfield District. And so what's really great about it is it's pretty central. So it's not very far for me to get to downtown London or for me to get to the Old East Village or kind of any place in between. So first things first, you guys may think I'm cheating because I don't have a job. So this is gonna be way easier for me to not need a car. Uh, yes and no. So yes, you're right, 100%. It's way easier for me to go carless since I don't have to drive to my job every single day of the work week. However, that being said, where I currently live is actually within four kilometers of any job I've held in the last like seven, at least seven years, probably we're getting closer to eight. I'm getting old, damn. But yeah, actually yeah, shit, it has been longer than eight. We're going eight, going on nine years at this point in time that I've worked in London, Ontario, and then my job has been within four kilometers of where I currently live. So even if I still did have that day job, it'd be hard for me to argue that I actually, that I actually absolutely need a vehicle in order to do my job function because, like I said, I live within four kilometers. In addition to that, grocery stores. So groceries are probably something a lot of us do weekly or at least bi-weekly if you're not doing it weekly. And so in my case, you know, where's the nearest grocery store to where I live? Well, I actually sat down and Googled it and like there's like four grocery stores, five grocery stores actually within like a one and a half kilometer radius of where I live. So there really is no excuse for me needing a vehicle because of groceries. 1.5 kilometers, I could walk that, I could bike it, I could Uber it, I could take a cab. There's all kinds of alternatives. And so again, groceries aren't gonna really hold me back. And then as far as food and entertainment goes, honestly, once I started looking at where I live and where everything is within me, 
pretty much all of downtown London is within two kilometers of where I live. That means that there's an obnoxious amount of restaurants, bars, entertainment places. I mean, within under two kilometers, there's five, five escape rooms. Within under two kilometers, there's multiple live music venues like the London Music Hall, Call the Office, and the Music Club. And in addition, there's way, there's more restaurants and bars than I could count. As well, there's like literally just an obnoxious amount of vegan restaurants even. So if we just look at it kind of as the capacity or the threshold of what's around me, there's everything's around me. I have zero excuses because I don't live in suburbia. So everything's actually quite close to me. Even, even if I wanted to go to Walmart, uh, Walmart's within five kilometers of where I live. So, and actually I thought that that was kind of interesting that of the things that a lot of people would look at as being necessary to live to, that Walmart's probably one of the furthest things away from where I live. I have a hospital far closer than a Walmart. Every major bank in Canada is within walking distance of where I live. All the restaurants, bars, entertainment, live music venues, a board game cafe within like two and a half kilometers. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. So once I actually broke down and started really exploring the area I lived in, it became apparent that there's a lot to do within a very short distance as well. There's like literally five breweries within under four kilometers of where I live. It's ridiculous what's going on here in London, Ontario. And so this may sound like actually like a tourism ad for London. But once I started doing my research, I realized, you know what? I'm going to make that video, but that's going to be a separate video. So let's just stay on course here. So let's look at then we kind of know what I view a vehicle as, what the common uses are that I as well as the average person use towards using a vehicle. Now let's look at the current costs. And so everyone's costs are gonna be different. You guys have seen me document to my channel much earlier in this channel's life about what I spend on my vehicle. It's really not that much, but still for insurance, you know, we're talking close to $100 a month for gas and basic maintenance. Again, I was often spending about $100 a month. And then if you look at depreciation or amortization on the vehicle, it's not too hard to come up with a $50 or $100 a month, again, based on what I bought my car for. If you guys want to dive into all those numbers, jump into my back history and you can see my monthly spending blogs where I really broke out for you literally what I spent every single month. But just trust me, I'm looking at about two to $300 a month in spending related to my vehicle. That's not peanuts either. We're talking about two to $3,000 a year that I'm spending on my vehicle. And so even let's say I'm making kind of that average income of say $50,000 that works out to four to 6% of my total gross earnings that I'm spending on transportation. And not only is that what I'm spending on transportation, that's only what I'm spending on vehicle transportation, like on an automobile transportation. I may still spend money on planes, trains, and other means of transportation. So just kind of use that as food for thought, figure out what your actual expenses are in regards to your vehicle in order to figure out what your opportunity cost is associated with owning this vehicle. I think far too many of us just get caught up in the idea of like, oh, I have to have a car. I need a car. My family members have a car. All my friends have a car. All my coworkers have a car. Cars, 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 cars. I mean, if you take a look even 50, 60, 70 years ago, that was not the case. We've quickly evolved and society has quickly evolved to embrace the automobile. And whether that's good or bad, I'm not going to dive into that in this video. But just be aware that it wasn't that long ago that your grandparents or your great grandparents did not own a vehicle and certainly did not have a one vehicle per adult in every household. So again, just food for thought. The inner accountant in me when it comes to vehicles and automobiles, I just, it's such an inefficient use of assets. It's such an inefficient allocation of resources that like it actually drives me crazy. I, you guys know based on my previous videos that I usually put about 10 to 12,000 kilometers a year on my car. The rest of the time, it's literally just sitting in my laneway rusting. And I mean, literally rusting because it, it's rusty as fuck. But that being said, it just, I don't, I don't need a vehicle all the time. So why should I own a vehicle all the time? As far as alternatives go in regards to an automobile, I think most of us are going to be familiar with a lot of these alternatives. We have walking, biking, Uber, cabs, bus slash public transportation, or you could just not go. Those are all very valid solutions towards the automobile or the transportation tool necessity. And the great thing is all of these alternatives are actually much cheaper than what a vehicle is going to cost. So, you know, walking and biking essentially free. Maybe you spend two, $500 on a bike and now you're set for multiple years. Your depreciation or amortization on that bike is essentially zero. Same goes with a pair of walking shoes. It's essentially zero once you break it out. 
Then we got Uber or cabs. I've recently started experimenting a lot more with Uber and like 90% of the places I travel to, again, are within five kilometers of where I live. So often I'm looking at about $12, $13 a trip Uber tab. That's really not that much, especially if I look that I'm spending two to $300 a month anyways on transportation. Once I break that out, that means I could probably take close to 20 to 30 one-way trips or about 10 to 15 round trips to and from a location. And again, when I, once I start breaking that out on a weekly basis, if even I'm only say doing 10 trips, 10 round trips a month, that's actually two a week. That's a decent amount of transporting my personal self around in a vehicle. I actually don't think I frequently need much more than that. As well, there's the opportunities to carpool with friends and family because literally 99.9% .9 of my friends and family do own a car. So it's not like all of a sudden I'm completely carless. I could always find a way to borrow one. As well, you can rent vehicles and I've actually been shocked by some of my friends that live in Toronto and don't own cars. When they come to visit me in London, Ontario, they'll rent a vehicle for the weekend. And often like, the cost is like minimal. They're talking like $40, $50 to rent it out for the weekend plus their gas. And I mean, that's like, it's nothing. Again, to come all the way from Toronto to London, it's actually cheaper than like a train ticket. So that being said, there's a lot of alternatives. It's just a lot of us aren't used to researching these alternatives or considering them. So I think it's really easy for us to just immediately have a visceral reaction of, no, you're not taking my car, you motherfucker. But once we actually, once we take away all the emotion, all the ego that's tied up in that transportation tool, your vehicle, your whip, it, it becomes blatantly apparent that the vast majority of us probably don't need a vehicle. And certainly most households don't need more than one vehicle. Again, like I said, I warned you guys, we're turning the crazy knob up a couple notches, so I hope you guys are hanging around with me and listening through this whole process. But there's one point I really wanted to hit home. The idea of just don't go to wherever you're thinking about going. And so this is gonna sound super strange and this is gonna really showcase for you guys my inner introvert, but the most powerful thing, the biggest driving factor towards me not wanting to own a car is the power it's gonna give me to say no. Let that sink in, the power to say no. And so what I mean by that is, if I don't own a car, the idea of having to like slip out just an hour away or an hour out of the city just to say hi to a friend or a family member, it becomes a lot easier to say no to that. And if that wasn't really important to me in the first place, having that easy no is such an easy win from a lifestyle or a life hacking perspective in my opinion. And now you may be thinking I'm a cold hearted motherfucker, but let's kind of rephrase this a little bit. So let's say it's gonna cost you $20 for that Uber trip to the other side of town in order to see your friend or family member. Or let's say it's gonna cost you $40 for the weekend to rent a vehicle to drive an hour or two north to go visit your friends or family or go visit the family cottage. Well, let's rephrase this. If you're not willing to spend say the $50 on the car rental or the $20 on the Uber trip, was it really worth it going to visit that person in the first place? You're gonna spend time literally physically transporting yourself from A to B, but in addition to that, you're then gonna spend time with that person. If you weren't willing to spend $40 for that car rental, or you weren't willing to spend $20 for that Uber trip, did you really even want to go see that person in the first place? And so I think that that's one of the biggest things I want to highlight with the idea of owning a car or an automobile, is that it just makes the answer too easy to say yes. It makes it too easy for us just to travel for the sake of travel's sake. It, we don't really see the balance between the costs, the costs associated with the benefits of the travel. So the idea that when you literally sit down and you're like, oh man, like Buddy's having a kegger and I don't even really want to go, but it's been a while since I saw him. Maybe I should take the hour trip to go see them and just like pop in, I'll say hi for like an hour and then I'll leave. If you own your vehicle already, you know, you have a sunk cost fallacy there, so you're not really gonna see the incremental cost and the overhead cost is it's set, it's fixed. So you're like, fuck it, it's not really gonna cost me much more to go drive and see them, so I'm gonna do it. Whereas, if you actually had to physically rent a car or you had to use an Uber and it was gonna literally take money out of your pocket today in order to go visit that friend or family member, you might think twice about it. And there's nothing wrong with thinking twice about whether you're actually getting value from your social interactions. 
I, I honestly think that it's something that's becoming crystal clear for myself currently in the last few months and particularly even the last couple of years is the idea that we just get into these social norms or these social habits and we just do them simply because we've always done them or simply because everyone else has always done them or someone simply told us to do it. And when you actually take a breath and think about it, that's fucking crazy that you're not actually thinking about whether you're going to go enjoy this social interaction, that you're simply doing it out of a sense of obligation because it's easy to say yes. So what I want you guys to do is really, really go through your life, really go through your social interactions, really go through your social circle because you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And if the time that you're spending with that person isn't worth a $20 Uber or a $40 car rental, was it really worth your time in the first place? What are you valuing your time at if you're not willing to spend $40 to go visit that family member for a whole weekend, but you are willing to spend the whole weekend's worth of time with them? That, that would actually sound really crazy if you sat down and thought through the whole process. So I'll, I'll give you a moment. Let, let that sink in. Right? How crazy is that? <laughs> It's pretty crazy how easy we fall into these habits where we don't really even analyze our actions or what the actual true cost of those actions are. So at the end of the day, that's the biggest thing I want you to take away from this idea of going carless. The idea of dropping your car is, is it really adding value to your life? And is the opportunities it's allowing you to take advantage of, are those opportunities even adding value to your life in the first place? But for myself at least, there's even a bigger picture here to the idea of going carless, and that's forcing my actions to align with my words. And so I'm a huge believer in the idea of supporting local, and I think I do a pretty good job of it. But if I drop my car, it's gonna be far easier for me to constantly be supporting local, because I'm simply gonna to go to the places that I can walk to, the places I can bike to, rather than the places that have easy parking and an easy commute. And again, from the whole environmental aspect, I think it's very easy to understand that there'd be a value towards less cars and less automobiles on the road, on the daily. So again, that aligns really well with my idea that we live on a planet of finite resources, and that trying not to abuse those finite resources isn't the worst idea. So if you guys have stuck with me throughout this video, I'm pretty sure you've came to the same conclusion. My mind's already made up. I probably will be dropping my vehicle, but I'd love for you guys to jump in the comment section and share your opinions with me. Do you currently own a vehicle? Do you guys have one vehicle per household or one vehicle per adult? Do you think I'm crazy for the idea of dropping the vehicle? Are you carless? Have you been carless in the past? And if so, what sort of uh, coping mechanisms or what sort of tips or strategies or techniques would you suggest for myself or or your fellow audience members on the path towards becoming carless or maybe just using less car in general. You don't have to go cold turkey overnight. I've slowly been phasing in towards this simply by driving less, by essentially like taking less good care of my car. As well, that's a whole another thing I didn't even talk about. The mental bandwidth that I'm going to free up, not having to worry about maintenance or other issues on my car, that's someone else's problem now. That's my Uber driver's problem. That's my taxi cab driver's problem. That's my, my bicycle's problem. It's no longer Matt's problem. And I also love that idea. It just, it's gonna allow me more time to focus on the things that are actually important to me, the things that are actually adding value to my life. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you guys would smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel, and please remember, sharing is caring. It's the only way I find new audience members, so please share this video of this crazy dude talking about dropping his car in a North American society, because I'd really appreciate the additional attention. And until next time, remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money out there for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point? Thanks, guys. Bye!